And the clubs have changed so much over the years. You know, when we all grew up, we had a 56 degree sandwich with a lot of bounce. Our other option was a 56 degree sandwich with a lot of bounce. I mean, there was, all of our clubs as we grew up, there was no options. I mean, you remember that. Uh, until Ping came along, they were the first ones. But now we have, I carry a 54 degree sandwich and a 58 degree lob wedge. Uh, that's just what I like. I use my 54 degree sandwich every time in a bunker unless I have a really short shot where I have to get it up and down quickly like right here. Uh, I only use this when I have to, the 58, because it's more room for error, okay? So, but as I said now, some players have a, a 60, 62, Phil Mickelson carries a 64 sometimes, and it just makes the game a whole lot easier. That's, you know, the USGA and the long putter, and we'll get into all of that probably in a minute or tonight, but, you know, there's things that have in, in, in enhanced the game and made it easier for everybody, which is a good thing, but it's also made it easier for the top players on tour. And because of that, these incredible shots are hit where, you know, quite frankly, they couldn't have been hit years ago. So I have a 54. Well, actually, you know what? I won't go to this pin. I just got to go to the middle. But the bunker, sand, the sand is, is, is not near as frightening as you think. When you get in the sand, all you're doing is splashing the sand out, okay? That's all I'm going to try to do right there. All right? Open your stance a little bit. Widen it, get a good foundation because you don't want to move much. You don't want your legs to be moving all over the place. You want your legs to be quiet and swing your shoulders and arms, okay? If your legs move too much, they're going to create too much angle. Sand, you want to get the angle out, just like that flop shot I hit over there. You want the angle to come out. So you want your feet a little wider apart. You want the ball forward of center a great deal, almost off your left foot. Because I don't want to have it too far back because if it's too far back, I've got angle again, don't I? If it's way at forward, then the angle will come out. Okay, splash it, exactly. Now, the bounce of the sand wedge is there for a reason, to bounce off the sand, okay? We don't want to dig. We don't want to keep the club face square because if it's square, it's going to dig right into the sand. We want to open it up to where it bounces right off the top. It's made there and it bounces there for a purpose. So you want the ball up, club face, I like to really open it up in the air, splash the sand out. It really is, honestly. If, but I see, you know what I see all the time from good players? I see strong grips, that's okay, strong grip. S square club face, ball too far back in the stance. I mean, I, I don't have a chance. Because I'm coming in too steep, ball's too far back, look what's happening. I'm coming in like right here. If I do get it out, she's going to run 50 feet, okay? I mean, that would be just the opposite. If I really wanted to splash this thing out, that's just the opposite of what I just showed you. So why do you even have a 58 when you can do that with a I can do better with that. I can get that up and down quicker. I use a 58 from around the green if I have to flip it over a bunker, really one of those delicate little shots. Or right here, good example. I don't even think I could stop it here. Would y'all back up just a little bit right there? I've been fishing a lot and I've been having hitting a lot of balls. And... <clears throat> oh, that's right. Now see, this shot right here, I could not carry it on the green and stop around the hole, so I'm gonna have to carry it somewhere on that fringe, but it's got to be soft. That's all I have. I mean, well, and you know, that was a lot of luck there too. Hit the sand, hit the fringe properly, and ran down to the hole. But I could not have done that with a 54, I don't think. See, there's the difference. You saw how soft that was. Okay. Um, Well, no, this is actually good stuff. This isn't hard pan. Uh, I've, never, I've never minded real soft, soft sand. Some people do. Uh, you got to swing a little harder, obviously, and it scares more like air under the ball. But that's what practice rounds and practice is for to get used to it. But I'd, rather ha I'd much rather have some, 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 uh, um, some mass there under my ball, yes. But, but uh, 
Um, yes, sir. What about the downhill lot, like back up? Well, it, yeah, good question. You got to take your medicine number one. <laughs> the ball's going to come out lower because you're on the downslope. We're coming into a fast, hard green here, so it's going to run out harder. But a main thing, as I said over there, let's get the ball on the green. Let's don't try to get too cute, okay? Was that a 54 instead of a 50? I'd go to 58 here right now. But let's don't get too cute and try to get it close to the hole. It's going to be almost impossible to get it around in the middle of the green. But the same principle, the whole, diff the whole difference is you want to set your feet, or you're going to be set because of the angle, but you want your knees, hips, shoulders on the angle of the slope because you still got to hit down and through and underneath, okay? You still want to put the ball up in your stance a little bit. You want to have, let me get this, 58. You still want to get the ball up in the stance a little bit. You want to open the club face. Now, if the sand is firmer back here, which it is a lot on the back side, of, you want to not open it up so much because you don't want to bounce too much off the hard sand. But you get it back here, put the ball up in the stance, put your angle, everything on the slope because it, you want to act like it's a flat lie. And see, she's going to run out on me. But that's all I can do. You know, but I want a 20 footer for par versus a 20 footer for bogey. Practice, feel. How much do you open? How much do you open your blade? How much do? You, how hard do you swing? How hard do you want to carry it? Uh, practice. That's all. I can't tell you that. I can't go. This is 10 yards. That's 12 yards. It's just practice and doing it. What about a fried egg? <clears throat> In a moment. <laughs> no, but uh, see, I, I, that's something I can't tell you. You know, you've got to get out and feel. That's why I said you, you practice around the green. You get a feel for some of that with different clubs. You get a feel for this. You know, if I hit it, if I want to go to this first pin here, it's a tougher shot because it's longer. But what I do now is just swing a little harder. Impossible shot, but see what I'm saying? I just swung a little harder. I don't even think about how, where to hit behind the ball. You know, the rule of thumb is an inch or so, but you do it so much, it's like when I hit a five iron, I'm not looking at the ball to hit the ball, it's just there and I hit it, okay? It's like a baseball coming at you. You just hit it. So I'm not looking at that line back there. Now to practice, it might be something to think about, but I just do it. And I try to hit the same distance behind the ball all the time because that way it's going to go the, the proper distance. I'm just going to adjust the length of my swing. You know, some of these things, I, I, I teach a little bit, some friends at home, not, not much. I know my swing, but for me to teach, to be a teacher, is an art. And it's tough for me to sometimes to communicate with you guys and girls, ladies, on exactly how to do it. I can tell you what you're doing wrong, but for me to tell you how to correct it sometimes is difficult. I know my swing. But I become very impatient sometimes. <laughs> Ask my kids. <laughs> All right. They say the toughest shot in golf is the long. Yes. I need a eight iron, please. Ooh. A nine iron and an eight iron. Um, I will show you that shot in a minute. But the long number four hole, the long one. All I would do, if I square up the club face, the ball is going to travel a little farther, a little lower. So I might squirt my club face a little bit more and just swing a little harder at it. This is a tough one to judge the run out. All right. I actually use this once in a while when you have to. The hardest shot in golf is truly the 40 or 50 yard sand shot because you can't take a sand wedge and carry it that far. You're going to have to try to pick it. And I, I would rather stick needles in my eyes and try to do this. You know, that's, that's, that's scary. So what I do, and I learned this from the Harmon brothers, from their dad, Claude Harmon, is that if you have a long shot, take less loft, hit it like a sand shot. Because it's less loft, she's going to come out lower with no backspin, and it's going to run to your hole, you know, 
if I'm going to the other, if I'm going to that cart over there, okay, I'll try to fly it somewhere on the green and she should run out to the hole, okay? Open the face up a little bit, put it up in my stance. And all I did, and all I did was change the club. It's not, it's not that complicated. This is a nine iron. We used to practice, a few of us on tour, when we really got bored, we'd get in a bunker if we got, had a nice area and start hitting seven irons and eight irons like this. Because if you have, think about it like this, if you have a, if you have a even tougher shot, say to that pine tree over there, the corner pine tree, the little one, and you had fairway to the green, and now you've got a lip to where you can't take a seven iron or eight iron and chip it and run it in there because I've got to get it above this. So now what am I gonna do? I'm gonna take a side eight iron here, but I'd take a seven iron and I'd do the same thing. That she's gonna come out low and it's gonna be running and chase. And all again, I'm just trying to get it on the green so I can maybe have a chance for par. If not, I'll make bogey. And that'll be on the green somewhere. And I'm hitting the same shot as I did with a sand wedge. Bigger swing. And just don't hit that ball first, let me tell you. <laughs> just, just don't hit that ball first. But that's all part of getting here and practicing and doing it and getting some confidence to be able to do it. Isn't that right? And let me tell you something. If I have this shot twice in a day and the first one, I skull and hit it over the center field bleachers, the next one's going to be really tough to do. So, Dave, everybody loses their confidence. I'm just going to try to blast it out of here and let it run up to the hole. Oh. That does have some spin on it. Let me just let me show you real quick what I was talking about with Mr. Harmon. He had this technique to uh, get it up and down very quickly in the air. And his technique was exactly what we were doing, only he would lay the club open. And the key is when you lay the club open is don't just rotate your hands because when you come back to impact, your hand's going to go back to square and the club face could be too square. So you lay the club open and then re-grip it. But what Mr. Harmon would do, he would lay the club open, ball up, lay the club open, and then put his hand on there real weak to the left. Exaggeration, but I will hear. So now when he cacked his hands up, the club face was wide slam open, wide open. So that made him release the club real hard just to get back to that position, which is wide open. And with speed, and you had to do it with speed, the ball would shoot straight up in the air and be wide open. I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> but this is when that, that shot you need to See? And it's just, now you have to have a de decent lie for that as well, so. Okay, so I have one question. Yes. And it's like a tour thing, it's about like the spectators more than the golfer, but you stood, stood in those incredible crowds. So some guy who's, you know, incredible, made a million dollars this year playing golf, hits one like 30 yards into the woods. And then they, they get there and their flags up here, and the fans are like, three feet to either side and how does it feel after you just hit one like 30 yards off target and the, the fans are like well, that never far. that's why we have insurance pal <laughs> you know if the tv makes it cl look closer than it really is i'm never going to hit a shot that i think somebody's going to be in danger seriously never because i don't want to do it um but it, the tv makes it look i know what you're saying it looks like there's a there's a tunnel like this but it's not like that it really isn't no well, well, hopefully you don't do that twice in a row. Right. But <laughs> hey, they're brazen. They get in there. They're brazen about it. They fight right up to the They line. do that. They do that. So All right, well, I'd it's just uh, one more shot. Just pick the last one you want to hit somewhere and uh, everybody can go have a drink. All right, let me just real quick one other thing is what happens in the fairway bunker. Yeah. Okay? I'll use a 9 iron one. It's it's a tough shot because you've got to be perfect. You've got to hit that ball first 
And I don't try to hit down and through. I try to pick the ball, okay? I try to get, I try to take angle out of my swing early because I want to be shallow. I don't want to come in here like this and try to hit the ball perfect because it's just, I just have a tough time doing that. I've always just tried to shallow my club out and, and pick the ball out of here. I'll hit it real quick, but I know he's there, but I just hit it like a normal shot. Just, I try to measure up to the ball, to the middle of the ball, and not hit any sand. And just, you know, all we're trying to, you know, we want to hit a good shot, but the, the main thing is to get it up there at the green, on the green, somewhere around the green. The last thing I want to do, I want to kill myself if I hit it fat. Do you uh, choke up? No, I don't. You know, I never choke up on any shot because to me, choking up changes the weight and swing of the club, which affects me and my feel. Even when I hit a three-quarter shot, I still have it on the end, and I just slow everything down and, and hit a three-quarter shot. But I never choke up, no. What about the berry lie? Berry lie. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Do you ever turn the toe down a little bit on setup for a fairway shot? I've heard somebody say just take it closer and so pull it open. No. No, no, I don't. It's just a normal shot. You know, obviously in a fairway bunker when, when you know, it's a full swing, but your feet have a tendency to move, I try to quiet down. I always take a club more. Who asked the question? I'm sorry, I got the sun. I always take a club more because obviously you can't swing as hard in the sand. And I try to quiet the legs down a little bit so I can be perfect right there, okay? You just can't hit it as far out of the sand as you can out of the grass. Put it back in your stance at all? No, no, because I'm picking it. If I put it back in my stance, it's going to come out too low. I want to get it right at the bottom. I don't want to get it on the real descending blow. I want to get it right at the bottom. But it's a tough shot. It's just one you have to practice and trust it and practice and practice. Uh, the buried lie, you know, they're tough. Um, some guys are better at it than others. It depends on the sand. It depends on if it's fried egg or actually buried. And where the pin is, can you get it up and down? You know, it's just you want to square the club face up because now instead of using the bounce, you want to use the leading edge. The key is here is to get the club under the ball, okay? The key here is to get the, hit the sand there and get the club under the ball so it would come up in the air. And the only way to do that is to get that leading edge digging down into the sand. Okay? I, well, I just said I, 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 I square it up. I square it up because I want it to dig. If it's really, really, really bad, I don't close this down. I'll go to a pitching wedge and open it up, and that's got a sharp leading edge digging down. You see? Pitching wedge or nine iron isn't a bad play. Uh, I'll put it back a little bit. I'm just trying to somehow get this club under the ball. That's all I can do. That's all I can do. It's just a tough shot. And some guy with soft sand, then you can get into if you're well, keep the club face square or shut. But uh, what I was talking about a moment ago, a nine iron or so, open the club face. <clears throat> See that leading edge leading there? If I gets down to the sand, this is if I have a lot of green in which to work and run it out to the hole. And you know, you don't have to swing at it real hard. It's going to come out. The ball will come out if it's buried. I think everybody swings too doggone hard at it and they hit too far behind it. You don't have to hit that far behind it. You want to hit just behind it to where the club's going to dig down under the ball. See right here. <clears throat> 